I don't want to go to the very, very beginning of your sort of quote unquote story. I'd love sure. to go to kind of the microscopic middle of mm -hmm. maybe even before you were reading Stephen's books, you yeah. know, yeah. That, that a moment of flow that you came upon and you were just like, okay, there's something here that I can use. Can yeah. you kind of break down that moment for us and, and what you deemed useful in it? Sure. So I believe that this is probably a different interview than most of yours, but I believe that I'm hardwired by nature to have depression. So if you look at family history, if you look at just the melancholy way I was born, you can see that depression is just, was just there. And so in my young adult years, I actually struggled with self-injury. That was kind of my kryptonite, if you will. So although I haven't self-injured in two decades, you know, my young adult years were really patterned by a high performance secret um, addiction to self-injury. And I see some of that actually as the answer was flow. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So why, what do I mean by that? Well, I believe that our neurochemicals are designed to essentially help people that struggle with depression. And I'm not saying, oh, there's never a place for medicine. But I do believe that too often we go to the normal prescribed, accepted solutions that the world offers. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of my ways to get out of self-injury was really tapping into writing. And I know Steven's done a lot of work, even, um, doesn't he have a course on flow for writers? He does, yeah. yes. So I gotta, I gotta cross promote a little bit there, <laughs> um, the other program. But to me, there's nothing more powerful than you creating a work of art. And so if you look throughout history, there's probably a lot of artists that got in the flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you sit up and paint the Sistine Chapel for hours and hours and hours, you know, there, I mean, you just look at master artists throughout history, and I think a lot of them got in the flow. Yeah. So, right? I mean, what, what do you think? I totally agree. And, and, you know, as you're saying that, I know, you know, we kind of, we kind of believe in as a culture that there is that, that stereotype of the, the depressed artist or the struggling yes. artist um, kind of almost thrives off of those downs in order to get those creative highs. I'm wondering in your case, if that was a, if, if that shift into cultivating your creative side through, yeah. Through maybe writing did that take you oh, out yeah. of the self-injury oh kind absolutely of yeah so the destructive creative energy mm. the predictable creative energy can be self-injury and and i think the listeners who are amazing by the way um so glad they're tuning in but i think that the listeners you know that's the easy cookies at the bottom uh, shelf is just be like, well, let's just pop some pills or let's just self injure. You know, I think that there's a lot of our world that is self injuring in different ways. Maybe not with a a knife or a mm -hmm. uh, you know destructive physical object, but you look at our world today, and a lot of them are self injuring. And some is some of the self injury could be maintaining a uneventful routine um, anti-flow life mm. where they, um, it was interesting. Carl Jung, Swiss psychologist was asked the question, what's the most damaging thing in the life of a child? It wasn't alcoholism. It wasn't abuse. It was the unlived life of the parent. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you see that that is self-injury. When, when, when a parent comes home and for 18 years of the kid's life, they see their parent kick the proverbial dog, um, curse and say, give me the remote so I can veg out. Veg is short for brain dead, vegetable. There's something that's very anti-flow mm. with 
with being in a vegetative state. You look at flow and flow is the opposite. Flow is, I'm very, very encouraged by flow triggers. And one, I, I was thinking of how to prepare for this interview and I thought one of the flow triggers that I use every day is novelty mm. because it actually jacks you out of this, um, you know, uneventful, blase life and getting novelty. And you might say, how, how are you tapping into novelty? Music, when mm -hmm. I write, mm -hmm. um, different foods. So travel. This is why a lot of people, when they travel, they're like, oh my gosh, I saw all these things and my mind was on fire and I, um, you know, had the best time of my life. It's because they experienced a flow trigger, novelty.